Hello everybody. Meet my friend, Chevy the Chevette. A little Vauxhall Chevette. Now, one of these cars was very important in my life. So I am going to tell that story to you. It's called, I wouldn't be who I am now without that Vauxhall Chevette. In December 1975, my life changed completely. The cause? A brand new Vauxhall Chevette. You see, my mum, who was born with achondroplasia, once upon a time more commonly known as dwarfism, was a lucky sort of person. She was the kind of person who would regularly pick winners in horse races, despite awful odds, just because she liked the name of the horse. Her luck with the football pools wasn't so great, and I spent my childhood in the hope that she would win with her regular numbers, 2, 3, 4, 8, 12, 14, 18, 21, 22, 23, 25 and 31. It never happened, but I never lost hope on Sundays as I went through those numbers. Still, there we go. My mum also in occasionally enjoyed entering competitions, and it was with one of these that she hit the big time. In late 1975, the Daily Mail newspaper was running a competition to win one of a number of different cars. My mother entered, and lo and behold, won one of them. It was a Vauxhall Chevette. As I mentioned before, she had a chondroplasia, and this, combined with being a hard-up single parent, meant that she'd never, to be able, never been able to afford her own car. What with the cost of purchase, let alone conversion to allow her to drive the thing, it just wasn't going to happen. No, instead, Middle and Red's buses got her to where she needed to go locally, and winning a car wasn't about to change that either, so she opted for the cash alternative. A whopping £1,300. This money allowed her to purchase a fridge, which was our first at home, and some fitted carpet for the living room. Again, a first in our house. The black and white TV, however, remained for another 15 years, until Granada TV Rentals gave up on its last monochrome set in the vicinity and asked her to hire a colour set at black and white prices. Rather generously, she decided that with the money that she'd won, that I could have a treat. A big treat. Now, I was only 11 years old at the time. And so she said that I could have the electric guitar and combined amplifier and speaker I had longed for since I was a small boy when I was infatuated with the guitarist Jimi Hendrix. I'd had a child's tin guitar made almost entirely from metal for a number of years. And I was a truly terrible player. But I thought that upsizing and raising the volume might shake things up a little bit. And so it was that my little mum my pal Peter Holmes and I caught the bus from Sutton Coalfield into Birmingham with our sights set upon the large branch of F.W. Woolworth in the Bullring area, a branch large enough to sell musical instruments, this department being situated on the first floor. I didn't know where else musical instruments could be bought because this was the only place that I'd ever seen them sold. We entered ascended the escalator and came face to face with one of Woolworth's own brand, Audition, electric guitars. My heart raced at the sight of the exotic instrument. But then, in a complete volt face, one look at the red sparkling drum kit sitting next to it changed my mind, my world and my life. I'd owned a single clay bongo drum for a couple of years bought for me by my foster sister Liz when she went on holiday to Tunisia. 
and I was rhythmically consistent on this drum when playing along to records such as the Monkees and the Beatles and the like. Seeing the drums in front of me made me realise that here was my true instrument, my destiny made manifest. I changed my mind. It was the best thing I ever did. 45 quid later saw the three of us struggling along with the enormous box towards the black cab rank in the bull ring of Birmingham. First, the box of drums was squeezed into the Austin FX4 taxi and then the remainder of us. And so ensued my first ever ride in a taxi, complete with a drum kit, a mum and a best mate. Once home, my mum confessed to knowing a jazz drummer who went by the name of Alan Reed. In fact, he lived on the same side of our street and I found out later that he had taught a number of rather fine drummers, well known throughout the land. In fact, indeed the world. He offered to give me lessons, for which I will be ever grateful, and the rest is history. Without drums, I would not have become a professional musician. And without that career, I would not have had my route into motoring journalism and TV presenting. Funny though, I really don't think that I've ever set foot inside a Vauxhall Chevette. Maybe I should do, but maybe it might just change my luck. I think I'll just sit here.